What's up, spooky sluts? Halloween whores? Nightmarish niggers? <laughs> I'm just kidding, but what's up, you guys? As you read the fucking title, today I'm gonna be doing a little guide to some of my favorite horror movies. And these aren't gonna be like the cliche, like, I am around Elm Street or Friday the 13th kind of like horror movies. Like, it's not really the horror, like, slasher shit, but it's like horror movies, if that makes sense. Like, more of like stuff that I don't really see a lot of people like talking about or just movies that you might not even know like existed because they're so fucking old or like they just I don't know. I don't know. If you don't know about them then maybe like watching this will help you figure it out. Fuck. I don't know. <laughs> so yeah. Let's get right into it. <laughs> First movie I have on my list is Dress to Kill by Brian De Palma. This came out in like 1980 and it's by the guy who directed like Scarface and Ah, uh, fuck, what else did he do? <laughs> Scarface and Carrie and probably a bunch of other movies that you probably haven't heard of, so I'm not even going to name them. This one is more of like an Alfred Hitchcock kind of, like, a lot of his movies are really inspired by like, Alfred Hitchcock and just, like, that whole, like, suspense thing. Like, there's still, like, a kind of, like, horror about it because, like, it's, like, a serial killer, like, thing. And, like, a lot of things that I've noticed are, like, it's like it's kind of like Alfred Hitchcock little trope or whatever that he does like in his shows or his movies is like the person who like witnessed the murder and like is trying to find out you know like they take it on it's really weird but but yeah it's more of like a mystery than a horror but it's still kind of like gruesome and it I don't know I just really like it and I thought like hey not a lot of people I know know about this movie so I was like fuck it so here we are. Second on my list, I have two movies, which are... The first one is called Blood and Black Lace, and it's directed by this Italian guy named uh, Mario Bava. And he probably, like, changed the fucking game as far as, like, horror movies went. And this came out in the 60s, and it's, like, it's shot so well. Like, you can just watch a trailer for it. And, like, just the colors and, like, everything that he used is, like, a real, like, psychedelic 60s-looking movie. And that's what kind of, like, started, like, the whole, like, slasher film craze or whatever in America. Because, like, <laughs> I'm gonna sound like such a fucking nerd right now. Because in Italy, they have, like, a little series of films called giallos. It's basically, like, a whole, like, subgenre of, like, just horror movies that are in Italian and shit. But then I guess, like, that kind of made American directors be like, oh, wait, we can do this too. And, like, that's where you get, like, you know, Friday the 13th and all the other shit, like... That was really influenced by the Italian horror giallo movies and stuff like that. The second one I had that went with this um, is Black Sabbath. And if you like the band, this movie is actually where they got their name from. So, yeah, it's really good. It's like, it's almost like a Pulp Fiction, but it's like Pulp Fiction and Twilight Zone kind of mixed together. And um, if you know who Boris Karloff is... He's in that too. He's like the Rod Sterling of the Twilight Zone that like narrates each story. Do you believe in ghosts? This is the night when fear and horror walk hand in hand. This is Black Sabbath. Starring the incomparable Boris Karloff, the personable Mark Damon, and lush and lovely women, even though one is from the netherworld, a vampire, a Vordalac. Black Sabbath, as ancient as superstition, as modern as the telephone. It's Pulp Fiction in a way that like they all kind of like intertwine with each other, but it's the Twilight Zone part just because of like the stories that they tell is like really weird and like kind of like makes you think about shit for a cool minute. But yeah, it's a really good movie and like you should watch those together. Either way, it is, there's like a year difference, so it doesn't really matter which way you watch it, but it's they're still good movies. This next movie isn't really like a s super scary movie, but it's like really gory and like gruesome and shit. So if you like stuff like that, then you'll love this movie. Um, it's from this French director. It's called Raw. It's basically about a vegan girl who eats meat one time, and then she becomes a cannibal. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it was, it's really good. Like, even just watching, like, I couldn't find this shit forever. And if you want, like, the link to it, then, like, DM me or whatever, and I'll send you the link to watch it. Because it took me forever to fucking find this movie. And, like I said, it's French, so it's not like you can just go out and just find it on, like, fucking Putlocker or whatever the fuck you use for the fucking movies and shit. But, 
it's still a really good movie and also the fucking scissor scene in that movie 10 out of fucking 10 that shit was so like i don't really get like emotional or like scared during movies at least but that shit just made me like feel like really nasty or like what the fuck am i it makes you like feel kind of weird if you're not even like if you're not sensitive to stuff like that then i think this one will still kind of make you feel like a little like weird about watching it but it's still really good um number four la, 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 la. Number four on my list is called The Last House on the Left. It was directed by Wes Craven. If you don't know who that is, he did um, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, Scream, and some other shit that I'm probably missing. But yeah, I like th this was his first movie, and I really like this one. And it wasn't like anything again, like anything like super scary or like I don't know, nothing like nothing like Scream or Nightmare on Elm Street. But it's still like one of those movies that like really like. It goes there in certain parts and it's I don't know like the acting feels like really genuine in it like it doesn't feel forced it feels like it feels natural like the the characters and everything like the people who are playing it's a really small budget movie too so usually like when that happens it's like really bad acting and shit like that but I don't know that's just something that kind of stood out to me that I just liked and I don't really like I didn't like Nightmare on Elm Street the only other movie I liked by him was um Scream just because I like you know thriller like mystery kind of movies and that was like an iconic ass fucking movie so yeah throw scream in there too fuck it number five on the list is psycho and that's just because it's like obviously one of like the most iconic fucking movies like of all time it's probably alfred hitchcock's best movie how can you not like it if you haven't seen it and it's 2017 then i'm kind of wondering what you've been doing with your entire fucking life but yeah this movie is like really like it's cool like the book was okay but the movie was way better it was really cool that they like incorporated like serial killer motifs and stuff like that into like norman bates and ed gein was one of like the main inspirations for the character i read somewhere because like what he would do was like get he would like basically turn his fucking victims into furniture which is kind of like it sounds so weird but like it sounds really interesting to me too like i don't that shit just like it it just sounds kind of cool to me like not it's <laughs> that sounds so weird to say but like i don't know but also if you've seen um the texas chainsaw massacre the leather face guy who has like that the mask that's someone else's face gein like ed gein also did that shit too like he would he would like skin their face off and like wear their face and shit and that shit sounds so weird but like i don't know i want to do like a video about serial killers or something like that soon hopefully i'll do one but yeah that was just like i don't know i just really like psycho <laughs> this next one is a movie that i feel like everyone fucking saw for some reason and that's get out but of course it was a really good fucking movie and like there's movies that come out and it takes like five ten fifteen years to cut like to gain like a cult following or like become a classic or whatever however you want to fucking define it but for this one it i feel like it already has like become a classic like i feel like this is gonna be like one of the most like one of the best movies that came out like in the 2000 teen years i've seen it like maybe seven or eight times just since i saw it in the theater so probably nine um in total and like every time i see it like i rem like I piece something together like to figure out like oh like he put so much like just little subtle hints at certain shit in there and it takes you a while to get it but I love movie like that adds to the life of it like I love movies that like every time you watch it you gain you can kind of like figure it out a little bit more and that's what like that's what's kind of gonna make it last so long like for me I didn't even understand the conversation that they have with the brother about the MMA fighting until like I just recently saw it and I kind of was like, oh, like, now I get it. So, I don't know. It's just one of those movies. Number seven on my list is Don't Breathe. And I feel like this movie was so underrated. Like, just I didn't even know about it until, like, it had already come out on DVD. Which I guess is kind of like the marketing team's fault. But if I had known about it when it was in theaters, I probably would have gone to see it. Because that's the shit I'm actually willing to pay money to watch in a dark room with strangers. But it would have just, like, add, I feel like it would have just made the experience a little bit better to see it, like, with other people. Because it's more of, like, a suspense, like, thriller and stuff like that. And it takes, like, a lot of twists and turns to, like, doing shit, like, you wouldn't even expect. Or, like, I don't know. It's just such a, like, unique story that 
I don't know, it just was really interesting and something I hadn't really seen been done before. And last but not least is Cannibal Holocaust. And from what I've read, this was like a really controversial movie just because like, I don't know, I don't know how true this is, but I've read or like heard stuff about like, um, some of the scenes in it were like, like where they kill animals or like they're eat, like the cannibal people are like eating people. Um, that it was real, like it, they, they actually killed the animals and they're eating like real life people. But I don't know. I feel like that's just more of like a shock value thing, but I don't know. Um, but, like, the way the film is set up, it looks kind of like a shitty documentary that, like, kind of just got found somehow. And this is probably, like, where they got the idea for, like, the Blair Witch Project, which I thought it was a really cool idea. Was that once it came out and, like, everyone was thinking about, like, oh, this is, like, real shit. The people who were in the movie, like, disappeared. So, they basically just stayed out of public eye. Like, they made them think that they actually died and shit. Which I thought was fucking genius. But... Like, they even did that for the Blair Witch Project, too. Like, when the movie came out, like, the stars were, like, they basically hid. Like, they didn't say anything to anyone. So, I don't know. I feel like that's such a cool, like, concept just because, like, people can't really do that today because motherfuckers want to, like, post shit on Snapchat every fucking 15 seconds showing where they are. So, I don't know how dedicated you have to be to do that shit today. But, yeah, that's that's all I got for today. So yeah, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you've seen any of these movies or like close to all of them, then comment and tell me like which one you think was the best in the whole lineup. And if you haven't seen them, then watch them and and then comment and tell me what you thought about them. But yeah, I really want to start making more videos like this because I really love movies. If you don't know that about me, then yeah, I'm like a really big film nerd. But um, yeah, I don't know, like, you guys can suggest like themes of like videos or like you want me to give my opinion on shit about certain movies i don't know for me i probably say my favorite is either get out or raw just because get out is so like it was just so fucking good and raw just because like it, it gave me like that little knot in my stomach to make me like kind of flinch at it a little bit but yeah um if you haven't seen them then yeah. but yeah once again thank you guys for watching and tune in next week to find out what movie I fucking hate with all my soul.